ovation. Jordan has been coming off the bench, as you know, in all games. But now his average minutes per game fill are up to 28 minutes per contest. Well, he's had four consecutive 30-plus games in terms of minutes. So, uh, and I, I read the paper where Judge said 34 is the limit. He's going to make sure that that doesn't get up there this game. So we'll see how that turns out. 34, in fact, was his season high in minutes played. Rasul Butler, no relation to Karan, and Jordan has the rebound well, and a loose ball foul on Miami. Job rebound, and they're, they're one and out. We told you one of the keys, one and done, and that's what they've done so far, uh, limited them to one shot each possession. Again off the screen, has another one. He's two for two. Well, their timing is really coming together well. You see how quickly that ball swung from the other side, and Jordan's open. He receives it right at the moment he pops open. Michael had 19 in the win over Utah Thursday night. Allen from way outside, nothing but net. Two-point field goal. Washington by seven. Jordan drives, lays it off. Players hit the floor, no call. Three-point field goal from Brian Russell. What made that possible? Brian's man dropped in to try and shut down Jordan. In fact, tried to draw the charge, but that left Brian Russell wide open on the side. Pat Riley is apoplectic on the sideline and picks up a technical foul. And uh, each game, he's getting more and more confident with his jumper. But you see, you notice the ball swings over to him in the corner. Once again, swings to him. His defender a little late to get there. He's able to get his feet set. Now he uses that quickness to get to the basket and get the layup. He's off to a good start. Brian Grant gets a rebound and scores. He just hangs around that basket. And if nobody takes it, he'll take it away from him. He has good, strong hands. And that time, uh, Butler comes up short on his shot. And you can see Stackhouse and uh, Haywood going for it, but uh, they uh, can't grab control of it. Mm. Who was it that uh, commits the foul there? Was that Haywood? Foul was called for Washington on Haywood. His first. Grant makes the free throw and has another one coming. Seven rebounds, three of them offensive for Brian Grant in his ninth year from Xavier. Third year in Miami, played three in Portland, and three in Sacramento. Hughes guarded by Travis Best. Hughes takes the jump and hits another one. Hanging jumper from Larry Hughes. He is four for five from the field as ten points. Well, that was a very difficult shot. The defender right there with him. And like you said, he had to hang in the air and finally release the shot. Teron Lou set to check in for the Wizards. Here's Travis Best. Goes all the way, and that's what he does best. He's very crafty around the basket. Best yeah. in his eighth year from Georgia Tech. The year is coming off the bench at Indiana, but uh, really providing some strong, solid, consistent play off the bench. Now, they brought him here to be a starter, actually. Stackhouse, a blocking foul is called on Grant. Score the field goal, he'll go to the line. But Grant's not a player that uh, is used to trying to draw the charge. I think had he set himself, keep an eye on him right there. As he tries to, does he step out of there? No, his foot's still on the line, so he yeah. can't get the charge there. But he wasn't in a position, really, to draw the charge. It looked like initially he was going to go for the block. A little indecisiveness on defense. That's, that's what it was. That line really makes a difference, doesn't it, Phil? Because what could be construed as a judgment call by the officials is no longer a judgment call. If your foot's on the line, you cannot take the charge. Absolutely. It's clear cut, especially when you get to look at it two and three times like <laughs> we do. <laughs> and like they do now, although not for that particular reason, only at the end of a game for a shot. So Stackhouse to the free throw line. 
He came in as the third best shooter in the NBA. He completes the three-pointer. He's shooting 93%. And in the game tonight early is Charles Oakley, who just was sensational in the victory over Utah. Played great defense, hit a couple of free throws, and then knocked the ball away twice at the end of the game from the rookie Stevenson. We came up with a big deal on Stockton, but even when he first came into the game, he was involved in the pick and roll, and eventually Stockton threw the ball away. Great move inside by Karan Butler, the rookie from So Lafonso Ellis and Vladimir Stepania are in for Miami, but that was a taste of what has made Butler, and many people think perhaps he was the best player in the draft. Yeah, he was uh, high on a lot of people's list. Uh, the Wizards were even interested in him as well. Stackhouse trying to draw the foul, tip up by Kwame and in. He got a shove from Lafonso Ellis, but still was able to tip that ball and guide it towards the basket and get the positive roll. Jordan is there for the rebound. In fact, Karan Butler was the 10th pick in the draft. Jared Jeffries was the 11th pick in the draft by the Wizards. Shot clock is at 10, game clock at 19. Lou to Jordan, takes the open jumper. MJ has another one. Michael has not missed. He's three. I believe, in, you know, as a veteran in this league, starting is, is is not that important. You know, you get in there, you get your minutes, and he's certainly been productive all season long, but in particular over the last four or five games. And he realizes, A, what his role is, but I think more importantly, he understands that in order to, to be able to play an entire season and try to remain injury free, he's got to have his minutes regulated somewhat. And Doug Collins feels the best way to do yeah. that is to bring him off the bench from the beginning of the game. That way, you know, at least he's sitting for the, the first, first six minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Lou with a steal and then runs over, I believe, our photographer. Yeah, Travis Best very close to committing a, a foul and giving up a potential three-point play. Long jumper good from Lafonso Ellis in his 11th year from Notre Dame, his first field goal. Wizards up 30 to 16. Wizards will be in Philadelphia tomorrow night. Oh. Alley, you try to Brown. Give the assist to Teron Liu, who hit the stanchion extremely hard. Yeah, he did. He came up limping a little bit, but he knew his best alternative in that situation was to throw that lob to the other side of the basket. Kwame was able to put it down. Let's hope he's okay. Teron struggling a little bit to get down court. Limping somewhat. He really hit the bottom of the basket hard as Jordan picks up his second personal foul. Yeah, he's a tough cookie, though, man. You know, I saw him during training camp. He was in excellent shape. But uh, you could see the physique on this guy. There he comes up with the steal. And uh, best one for the steal. Almost commits a foul. Sixth Miami turnover in one-plus quarters here tonight. Jordan with an incredible play and the steal. Lou runs the break three on two. Kwame underneath. Score the field goal. He'll go to the line. Well, that's the beauty of this young man. First of all, you're looking at Jordan, who initiated everything with the steal. But Kwame was able to get the assist from Teron Lou. And you can see him getting some recognition from his coach there. One more time, Jordan playing the passing lane, flipping it back in and starting the fast break. Nothing surprising from Jordan. Bounce pass to Jeffries who's filling the lane. And they've got everything going. They've got the strong defense. They're converting transition baskets. And they're shooting a very high percent, still over 60%. Six assists for Stackhouse, and the fans are on their feet for the hometown hero, Juan Dixon, who checks into the game for Washington. Now, what I meant by him coming into the game when it's, when it's a blowout is we understand the pecking order in terms of substitutions. Uh. Stackhouse lays it off for Dixon. 
Always in control. That's what impressed me about him in his previous three games this season for Washington. Juan averages six points. Baseline Hughes jumper. Yes. Oh. At the buzzer. Could it what have finished have. any more perfectly for Washington? Absolutely not. Strong defense, great offense. They shot right around 60% for the half. And hopefully they'll come out with the same intent. He did. He Got him with the left hand, yeah. the off hand. Wow. He, he came so far out to the free throw line, I didn't think it had yeah, anything to do with Watch Kwame's left hand right there. Yep. And Karan Butler struggles to leave the court and gets a round of applause. So, yeah, it was Kwame Brown's left hand. Yeah. It's one of those things just being in the wrong place mm -hmm. at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. So the... Rookie from UConn, who had his career high last night in New Jersey with 18 points and nine rebounds on seven of 12 shooting, has to leave the floor. So he's off to a very good start for a rookie. He, he's had several good shooting games, as you mentioned, uh, the game last night against New Jersey, his season high, but he's been a solid performer for them. And this is a team that desperately needs scores. I mentioned before, they're 26th in the league in points per game, averaging just over 85. So that's going to be a big loss again for Pat Riley. Of course, as we told you early, Alonzo Heat is not with the team, all-time franchise leader in blocks, free throws made, free throws attempted. Jones again from three-point range, missed it, Hughes has it. Washington by 21, led by as many as 27 at the half. Stackhouse guarded by Jones, great move, Jerry reverse layup. Score the field goal. Wait a minute, it won't count. He stepped on the end line. Boy, did you see the hesitation move? Hesitated, pretended like he was going to turn back towards the middle and then continued along the baseline. Nice move, but obviously uh, stepped out of bounds. That's his first turnover of the game. And of course, he's had a nice job dishing the ball. Jerry with seven assists so far. It looks like he's feeling to see if he got some blood. At the buzzer, Allen hits the jumper, and Stackhouse is checking his left eye. And let's see if uh, he's going to be okay. Malik Allen, five for nine. He's about the only one who's done anything for Miami. He's got 12 points. Hughes baseline, looking for some help. Six seconds to shoot. Stackhouse draws contact, no call. Grant the rebound. Anthony Carter. Jones again, again the miss, tip up taken by Hughes. Good box out by Russell. Ryan Russell pulls up to the running jumper and hits it. Stackhouse. Looking for Jordan on the wing. They find Hughes instead. He's jumping short. And the rebound right to Ellis. Let's head over to George Johnson. George? Well, Buck, as for Kalan Butler, they say he has a bloody nose. They're just keeping him back there as he tries to clear his head. He... Stackhouse gets tangled up. Lou, the long jumper, got it. Two-point field goal for Ty Lou, who has seven points as well. Great hustle, excellent shooter, nice pass to Kwame. And Greg Willard spots a foul. It's on LaFonso Ellis, their largest. Traveling is called on LaFonso Ellis and another Miami turnover. That's 12 in the game. They average 12, which is number one in the league, but they committed all kinds of turnovers in the first yeah. half. Yeah. Wizards have out-rebounded this Miami team 30-25. to 25. Kwame Brown and, and Larry Hughes each have six boards tonight. 
And Mike James is called for a foul again. It looks like Stackhouse will get that ninth yes, he will. attempt. Stack came into the game leading the NBA in free throws attempted with 85. He's seventh in scoring at 24.2. Tracy McGrady is number one in scoring at just over 32 points a game. Jerry getting a lot of playing time. James, who played in just 15 games for the Heat last season, all off the bench, has done a nice job here with 10 points off the bench tonight. Dixon missed short on the jumper, his first of the night. And on the pass, James is fouled again. This time it's on one. This time last year, the Wizards had a record of two and seven. They are on their way to their sixth victory of the season in four losses. Well, you can see Kwame backing his man up, faking jab, faking jab, faking, finally getting him to respect that move, that quickness, and it pulls up for the soft jumper. 13 points and seven rebounds for Kwame. He's six of nine from the field. Ken Johnson in the game for Pat Riley and Atan Thomas set to check in for Washington. Dixon off the screen, a little bit short. And the Heat nearly kicked the ball out of bounds. Allen, double dribble, sure looks like it. <laughs> Stackhouse is there for the rebound. Five minutes to play in this one. Stackhouse lost it off his foot. Quadley lays it up. Left-handed off the glass. Boy, he's great. developing that shot. Yes, he is. And that's so important for a low post player to be able to use both hands to finish off equally. Kwame has missed just three shots in 10 attempts, has 15 points. Rasul Butler is short. Larry Hughes, the rebound, he'll wait for his friends. These teams will meet three more times this season. Once here, twice in Miami. Stackhouse inside, lays it up underneath, and he got fouled on the pass. Moved by James. Blocked by Kwame out of bounds. It's Kwame's second block of the night. James, who's shown a lot of quickness. In 82. Yeah, but the years he was led to leave and score those two times, he was with Buffalo. Oh, good effort by Kwame. Can't get it to go down. Under three minutes to play in this run. Kick it for Carter, nice leaves, but they turn over Miami, and that is their 16th turnover of the night. You see the frustration on Pat Riley's face, his team about to go one and seven. You know, Hughes gets his hand on it, and Juan's in position to pick it off. Watch the left arm, kind of push off defensively, but uh, still got the call, but missed the free throw. Thomas inside lays it in. Another Maryland connection, as I was about to say, Rasul Butler was coached last year by Billy Hahn, who, of course, was in a Maryland assistant for many years. And a kickball kick on Jerry Jeffries. Jeffries. Uh, each time he's into the game, he is... Uh... 11 rebounds for Kwame Brown and 15 points. A double-double for the second-year star. Washington with an impressive win tonight to improve to 6-4 and four on the year. Beating Miami by 30 points as the Wizards shoot 52% from the floor. And let's send you over to George Johnson with Kwame Brown. All right, thank you very much, Buck. Well, this game seemed to go very easy for you guys. It seemed to be something that you were able to settle early in the ball game. Yeah, we just came out with energy. I mean, they played a game last night. We didn't. 
So we want to come out and run them. Our big guys ran the floor well and made their big guys work. And I think uh, we wore them out. We were able to get the team to score. What's the plan to try to get you and Jarrett and Brendan involved early down low against a team that seemed like they didn't have any low post presses? Yeah, you know, because they're smaller than us on the inside, we're trying to pound them on the inside because usually, you know, we don't have a post presence. So we're just trying to establish that early to make it easy for Jarrett and them. How about yourself? I mean, did you come out at all in this ball game? Uh, I came out a few times, but <laughs> no, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, real quick, Coach talked about the fact that he was looking for some energy. Yeah. You know, it seems as if maybe you played a couple of games and maybe get a little tired. Yeah. Did you feel that? Well, I was under the weather a little bit. I'm getting over it now. I'm on Sudafed and all kind of stuff, trying to get the cold out. You know, I was, I was a little dehydrated that past couple of games. But I'm just going to try to come out and give it all I got. He's going to sub me in and out. He understands that I'm a little under the weather, but I'm just going to give it all I got.